In this video, I'll show how to make output invisible, which is helpful when a function has a large output, and I'll also cover how to use a function recursively. If your function returns a lot of results, it might be a bit obnoxious when a person forgets to assign the output to an R object. If you think your output is likely to be annoying when it's printed out, you can use the invisible function in place of the return function. Then, when a user fails to save the result to an R object, their console will not be flooded with output. And if they do assign the output to an object, the object will store the result. That said, invisible output can confuse users, so use this trick with caution. It's also worth noting that using classes and methods inside of R is another way to address this challenge. However, classes and methods aren't a topic I'll cover in this video. And one more tip before we move on to recursive functions. If you happen to flood your console screen, or if you simply want to clear the console, if you're on a Mac, use Command-Alt-L, or if you're on Windows, Control-L, which will clear your console screen. Alright, on to recursive functions. A recursive function is a function that may call itself. For example, I can create a function called log me that takes the log of a value if the value is larger than 1 and keeps doing this until it gets a value that's less than 1. If the value is less than 1, then the function simply returns the result. The way the code is written works, but what if I happen to change the function's name? I would still want the function to call itself. To make sure it does, I should use the function called recall which automatically calls the function it's in. In general, using recall is the preferred way to build recursive functions in R. In the next video, we'll look at how to use a custom function with the apply function.